Hello YouTube. So I've got a plan to make one of these three lobed uh, finger spinners from a piece of uh, cherry. And uh, the first step in this process is going to be to try and model this thing in uh, SketchUp. So I've got some sort of template to work to make sure I get the bearings in the right places, get it, try and get it nice and balanced. Uh, so I'm going to try and model this in SketchUp. I thought I'd video this just to show the, how I go about it. I'm sure there are better ways if anyone's got more ideas on how I should have done this, please let me know. Uh, but uh, let's switch into SketchUp and uh, we'll get started. So I'll start with a new SketchUp uh, model here, blank model. So I'm going to switch straight away to uh, parallel projection mode and uh, the top down view. I've got this set up in millimeters woodworking template style. Uh, if you're a more imperial sort of person, you may want to use different units, but uh, the bearings I've got standard 608 bearings are 22 millimeters across. So I'm going to be working in millimeters. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a circle to the uh, the middle of the uh, the model here. That's circles in SketchUp start off with 24 sides, but I find that's a bit too faceted. So I'm going to up, update that to 64. And uh, start a, draw a circle at the origin there. And uh, the bearings are 22 millimeters across, so I want my radius to be 11 millimeters. That's kind of small, so let's zoom in. Now, the main feature of this, and the main reason it's I'm wanting to model it in SketchUp rather than just trying to draw it out by hand on the piece of wood is the uh, sort of three-way symmetry to it. So the way we can set that up in SketchUp is to start with the protractor, click in the center, click out on the axis here, kind of uh, snaps to the axis, click there. And I want to move up 30 degrees. So type three zero. And now this guideline is at 30 degrees from the axis, which means it's at 120 degrees from the vertical around this way. And I'm going to do that the same on the other side. Go up 30 degrees, type into 30. So now these two guidelines will set the main locations for uh, the other two bearings here. I can add another guideline using the tape measure tool straight down along the green axis just because that might turn out to be useful. That's not quite what I wanted. Let's try doing that with the protractor and see what happens. Okay, another guideline there. So I'm going to set my other bearings. I'm going to have two at the top and one at the bottom. So the dimensions I want to do now, I want to mark where the center of the next bearing up here is going to be. So I'll use my tape measure for that, start in the middle, come out along this line, and the distance I want, I'm going to allow six millimeters between the two bearings. The two bearings have a radius of 11 millimeters each, so that's 28 mil altogether. So this little mark here is going to be the center of that top right bearing. I'll do the same over here, 28 millimeters. And one coming straight down, 28 millimeters. So let's draw in the circles for those bearings. It's gonna be the same 11 millimeter radius. And SketchUp should help me out here a little bit. It kind of snaps to the last dimension you used. So those are the three main spots for the four bearings for the, the spinner. Okay. Now next I want to draw the outline. This is kind of the tricky bit. Now I want the, the width from the edge of the bearing to the edge of the finished piece around here to be nine millimeters. So that gives the total dimension from the center here out to the edge here of, let's try that again, 48 millimeters. So 
So that's 11 here, 6 here, 22 here, and 9 here. It comes to 48 altogether, if I've done my sums correctly. And again, we'll do that on all three sides. I have tried using the SketchUp uh, sort of mirroring and symmetry tools, but they don't seem to work very reliably. You can get, I could get the uh, sort of three main bearings to be copies of each other, but then when you try and come in to try and uh, do this outline and get it all to link up, things get a bit tricky with those uh, three separate components. So I pretty much gave up on that. So these mark the outside of the radius and we want a circle to come we want a circle going round each bearing centered on the middle of the bearing so back to the circle tool and now i can snap to that guide point and that way i can be sure these three circles are all the same size and that's the basis of the outline of the three main lobes and we just need to fill in a nice curve here so best way I found to do this is to add some more guidelines. So I'm going to draw guidelines between the edges, not there, between the edges of the three lobes like this. And now this point here where the new guidelines meet the uh, the axes can be the center of the a new circle to form that uh, that nice radius here so again three more circles and if i just drag around here you can see sketchup snaps to a few different points try and pick the best one it doesn't seem to accurately snap to a seg to a tangent it seems to just snap to the different facets of the Circles are already there, but that's touching there. That's pretty close. Do one there, one there, and one there. Okay, so that's the basic geometry all set. Now we need to go through, hit space to switch to the select tool. Just need to go through and delete the bits that we don't want. So this gets a bit tedious. Again, there must be a better way to do this. We can go through, delete all the bits of geometry that uh, are no longer needed. Again, SketchUp's broken all these circles down into individual segments, which I didn't ask it to do. I don't know why it does that. I guess as soon as I delete one part of it, that happens. But you can click on each line segment, just make sure it's not going too far around before you delete it. Delete that, delete that, delete that. Okay, this one's broken into segments again. You can click and drag to select multiple segments at once, but you don't want to select too many. So let's just keep going around here. Shift the middle mouse pans across. Now, I'm not too worried about this being an accurate model because, or a finely detailed model, because I'm just going to trace around it on a piece of wood. So if these edges don't quite line up properly, that's no problem for me for this purpose. going around here could even just stop at this point you could just trace over the lines that you know you want when you come to uh, mark this out on your workpiece but let's make it look a bit neater control Z when you make a mistake not if okay so that's the basic shape now we can select the inside of these circles delete those 
And that is the basic finger spinner template. Let's just see how, go to the tape measure, see how tall this is. I can pull a, a guideline to there, one down to the bottom, and measure that. Oh, 80 millimeters, 82. It's not snapping to be vertical again, I don't know why. There must be a way to do that, but anyway, about 80 millimeters wide. So I'm pretty happy with that. Seems to be about the right size. Now the next step with uh, SketchUp is I want to be able to print this out uh, at the correct size. So the way I found to do this is fairly straightforward. We go to file print and you don't want to use fit to page. You want to use the settings as they are here, I think. So in the printout, it's one to one scale between the printout and SketchUp. And if you print that out, you should get a print out in the center of a piece of paper, you can just measure across one of these circles, make sure it is exactly 22 millimeters. And Bob's your uncle, you can take that out to your workshop, stick it on a piece of wood, cut around it, and uh, you should be good to go. So I hope this helps. I'll put a link to the uh, SketchUp model I've just created here in the description. And uh, I'll get on with making the actual finger spinner pretty soon. If you want to see the end result, please uh, click subscribe and uh, I'll post a video to that too. Cheers for now.